I can't, I can't. I don't want to say mean things about people. This is insane. This is insane. This person literally, oh my God. Today is the day that I've learned that Shane Dawson's book has been removed from bookstore shelves. It has, for example, disappeared from the website of Target, apparently the Target um, supermarket chain, department store chain, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's going to stop selling Shane Dawson's books entirely. And there are a lot of kind of shallow responses you could have to this in the, in the spur of the moment. Like, are we going to police the morality of each and every author at Target? Does Target sell books written by communists? Does Target sell books written by Nazis? Does Target sell, you know, whatever, uh, Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf for historical interest? I mean, you know, there are important books historically that are written by indescribably terrible people, including some former presidents of the United States whose statues people have been trying to tear down lately, I, I might add, right? I used to have a slogan on this channel. It ain't deep, but it's real. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep it real in this video, but this one this one goes pretty deep. There's a very interesting parallel between the moral panic over Shane Dawson and his frankly pedophile comments about sex with underage people, and the controversy that is in court in France right now. A controversy that has roots going back to 1977. If you go to Wikipedia, I'll give you the link below this video. And let me just note, it's very rare that I provide a Wikipedia article as a link in the description. Somebody put a lot of work into this Wikipedia article. There's a very, very strange history in France of left-wing intellectuals opposing age of consent laws and left-wing intellectuals endorsing and supporting pedophilia. No, I, that wasn't a typo. No, I didn't misspeak. Bizarrely, all kinds of big names, people who are still uncritically worshipped on the left wing, like Jean-Paul Sartre, Michel Foucault, Roland Barthes, Jacques Derrida, etc. These are sort of greatest hits of the left wing fringe of the French intellectual establishment. They all stood up and wrote open letters and protested that it was somehow a great injustice to deprive them of the right to have sex with people under 16 years of age and even under 14 years of age. They were, on paper at least, pro-pedophile. And as I mentioned, this debate in French politics continues to this day and it's presumed that at least symbolically it is going to conclude with the conviction of Gabriel Metzneff. Gabriel Metzneff is a famous author in France not so famous here in the English-speaking part of the world. Gabriel Metzneff, it's not just that he faces accusations from one um, ex-girlfriend, shall we say, uh, a young woman whom he had sexual relations with when she was 14, and he was approximately 50 years old. Um, and by the way, the number 14 is significant because the age of consent in France is so low anyway. If she had been 15, it would have been legal and there wouldn't be any possible repercussions. So when the age of consent is so low, when the age of consent is 15, they can only investigate and prosecute cases where it's a 14 year old. But okay, apart from the testimony of that woman, she's now a fully grown woman, it's many, many years later, um, we have the testimony of the author himself, who in numerous essays, interviews, and books advanced his, uh, shall we say, pedophile philosophy of life. And it's interesting, every single newspaper article I've seen on this, and including um, some broadcast media that covered this in, in news items, every single one vaguely talks about the French establishment supporting Gabriel Metzneff. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the conservative establishment. All right, it's not the Catholic establishment, it's not the Jewish establishment, it's not the Protestant establishment. We are talking about the left-wing communist and crypto-communist establishment with everyone. We are talking about people like Jean-Paul Sartre, Michel Foucault, Roland Barthes, Jacques Derrida, etc. Click on the Wikipedia article for the full list of names. That's part of what makes this so worth puzzling out, so worth thinking about, and asking yourself in what ways French society and civilization has changed since 1977. And in what ways it has stayed the same. Now, I also think if you are a left-wing intellectual yourself in the audience right now, I think it is really worth profoundly reflecting on 
just how wrong these people were. And if their judgment was so bad about, about this issue, about pedophilia, to be blunt, how could you possibly trust or respect their judgment on any of the nuanced political and philosophical issues that people, including university professors, do indeed respect them on? Right? I, quick parallel. I saw a lecture recently from a Muslim author, and this is actually a white Western guy who converted to Islam. He, he wrote a whole book, and he's going on a lecture tour about Islam and slavery because he, he admits to himself that he has difficulty trusting, you know, the, the word of the prophet. Like, how can you take seriously the political opinions of the prophet Muhammad if you know that he was pro-slavery? And what ensues is like, you know, the most cringe-inducing process of him bending over backwards to offer one insincere excuse after another for why, well, after all, slavery was no problem and it was a long time ago and things were different then, etc. There is a great deal of that same rationalization, that same style of excuse-making mentality that goes on now where the year is 2020 and people want to pretend that 1977 and 1979 was somehow, you know, like 10,000 years ago as if the rules of morality <laughs> didn't apply then as now. Let me tell you something. When you're talking about slavery, exactly the same issues were being debated in Aristotle in ancient Greece. Ain't a damn thing changed. If you're talking about the age of consent, I would say that too, uh, both in ancient religions and in every century and every period. The same fundamental questions, the same fundamental problems are there. Human nature ain't changed. The reality of love and relationships and raising children, those fundamental aspects of life have not changed. So you, you can't pretend that in 1977 there was somehow a totally different moral compass that applied to these people when they stood up and, and, and I mean to compare this to Shane Dawson there is no comparison these people were sending letters to the editor they were sending formal protests to the government they were actually making a pro pedophile protest movement they were arguing deadpan seriously that it was um, an unjust oppressive uh, regime that would deprive them as pedophiles of the right of sleeping with people 14 years old and younger. Wikipedia article covers it fine. Some of them specify 12 and 13, some of them specify 11. Different authors within this group in France had different particular predilections in terms of how far they were willing to take. So let me, let me just ask you a question. Let me just ask you a question. If you are going to take Shane Dawson off the bookshelf, if you are going to take Shane Dawson out of the libraries, if you are going to burn Shane Dawson's book. How about Jean-Paul Sartre? How about Jacques Derrida? How about anyone on this list of greatest hits of the French left wing? This is insane. This woman is a fucking. I'm gonna wait till as many people get in here as I'm. Keep playing it. Keep I playing didn't it. Know I was making a video. So how is it that so many editorial outlets knew that something was coming before I? Had because you mess in drama channels. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I mean, really. People like to disrespect my crew, but the fact is that you know my name and I don't know you. 